the world, etc. So Kukuni is a founding member of the Tech Health Artist Group MTU and has worked with the CUSS Group Collective. His most recent project is a visual culture bank and research game called Open Time Coven, which investigates emergent technologies and repressed African spiritual philosophies. Please welcome Bahosi Sabuni. The source of all, but not all, short period comets, is believed to be the Cape Belt, which is a belt of small astronomical bodies beyond the orbit of Neptune. Some short period comets, nevertheless, may originate from the Oort cloud. Comets whose return periods are generally known are termed periodic comets. These comets are mainly short period, but may include a few long period comets. Long period comets are more numerous and tend to be brighter than short period comets. Comets are frequently visible only during twilight because of their proximity to the sun at that time, and hence the optimum brightness of the comet. Contrary to popular belief, comets do not shoot across the sky, but move at approximately the same speed as the planets. Comets rise and set along with the stars. Close observation of comets is required to detect their motion against the stellar background. A few very bright comets can be seen in daylight. They are very unpredictable in terms of their apparent magnitude. A bright comet with a prominent tail will be evident once every 10 years or so. The crude sun grazers are a family of sun grazing comets characterized by orbits taking them extremely close to the sun at perihelion. They are believed to be fragments of one large comet that broke up several centuries ago and are named for the German astronomer Heinrich Kurtz, who first demonstrated that they were related. A current sun grazes at perihelion is about 170 AU from the sun, these sun grazers make their way from the distant outer solar system, from a patch in the sky in Canis Major, to the inner solar system, to their perihelion point near the sun, and then leave the inner solar system in their return trip to their aphelion. There is yet no sign of permanent peace among the native races of South Africa. We hear this morning from Durban, of the death of one of the bravest of our former enemies, the chief Sekukuni. He, with his son and 14 followers, has been killed. Krupp referred to the Basutu, actually the northern Sotu, at Blauberg in the northwest northern province, who adored Mududuza, a large comet. No further details were provided regarding the identity of the comet, although the original report was dated the 19th of October, 1877. It is not impossible that the comet may have been Comet Haley in one of its previous <coughs> apparitions, or perhaps the comet of 1843. The Great Comet of 1882 formerly designated C forward slash 1882R1, comma, 1882II, and 1882B, was a comet which became very bright in September 1882. It was a member of the Kurtz Sun Grazers. The news carries us some years back to the time when the name of Sukukuni was a name of dread. First to the Dutch, and then to the English colonists of the Transvaal 
and Natal. It was indeed to a great extent the danger caused by the neighborhood of this formidable chief that led to the annexation of the Transvaal by England. The comet appeared in the morning skies of September 1882. Reports suggest that it was first seen as early as 1 September 1882 from the Cape of Good Hope, as well as the Gulf of Guinea. And over the next few days, many observers in the Southern Hemisphere reported the new comet. The first astronomer to record observations was W.H. Finlay, the chief assistant at the Royal Observatory in Cape Town, South Africa. Finlay's observation on 7 September 1600 hours GMT was also an independent discovery, and he reported that the comet has had an apparent magnitude of about three and a tail about a degree in length. The comet brightened rapidly and within days had become an exceptionally bright object. Her Majesty's astronomer at the Cape, David Gill, reported watching the comet rise a few minutes before the sun on 18 September and described it as quote unquote. The nucleus was then undoubtedly single and certainly rather under than over four inches in diameter. In fact, as I have described it, it resembled very much a star of the first magnitude seen by daylight. When war was declared against the Zulu king, operation went on simultaneously against Sikukuni, and early in 1879, his stronghold was attacked. Obstacles stood in the way of these operations, and when after Ulundi, Sir Garnet Wolseley entered the Transvaal, he endeavored to humiliate the chief. The comet was rapidly approaching perihelion when it was first seen. At perihelion, the comet is estimated to have been only 300,000 miles or 480,000 kilometers from the sun's surface. Shortly after perihelion was reached on 17 September, the comet transited the sun. At the Cape, Finley observed the comet with the aid of a neutral density filter right up until the moment of transit, when the sun's limbs was boiling all about it. Finley noted that the comet disappeared from view very suddenly, and no trace of it could be seen against the sun's surface. After its perihelion passage, the comet moved into dark skies, and although it faded, it receded from the sun, it re and and although it faded as it receded from the sun, it remained one of the most prominent objects in the sky. On 30 September, observers, including Finlay and E.E. E. Barnard, began to notice that the comet's nucleus was elongated and broken into two pronounced bright balls of light. And by 17 October, it was clear that it had broken into at least five fragments. Observers reported that the relative brightness of the fragments varied from day to day, but Sikukuni was safe, as he imagined, in an impregnable mountain fortress, and scornfully rejected the terms offered by the British general. It became necessary to attack him in force. The combined movement of columns, containing 2,000 English and 10,000 Swazis, and other native troops was planned and carried out with great skill and on the 28th of November, 1879, the kraal was taken by assault. Still, the chief and a great number of his men held the gopi, and from the caves and cracks in the rock, they poured an incessant fire upon their assailants. In mid-October, the comet developed a notable antitail, pointing towards the sun. Antitails are a fairly common cometary phenomenon and result from orbital geometry, giving the appearance of a tail pointing towards the sun, although material can only be driven away from it. The nucleus reached its maximum apparent size in December 1882. The comet faded gradually, but despite its fragmentation, it remained visible to the naked eye until February 1883. A comet Mushoshono was believed by the Tsipedi Papedi to constitute a very bad omen and predict war. Krail and Van Veek give Naderia Musela as the northern Sutta term for a comet. Bayer describes comets as Naderia Musela, stars with tails, which signify the death of a great northern Sutta chief. 
A prominent, although ruthless, baby chief was assassinated during the night of 13th of August 1882 in a succession struggle for chieftainship of the bay. This event could perhaps be retrospectively associated with the impressive comment C forward slash 1882R1. At last the summit was gained, and after a desperate and sanguinary struggle, the enemy was subdued. Sikukuni, however, like Stetrio, succeeded in escaping and was only captured a few days later. He was treated for a time as a state prisoner, and his land was settled somewhat after the Zulu manner. If, however, the death of Sikukuni portends anything, it means that the displaced chief in these savage and warlike regions still retain some power, and that on occasion they are able to rise successfully against him who has superseded them. Studies of the orbit of the comet showed that the Great Comet of 1882 was moving on an almost identical path to previous Great Comets. These comets had also suddenly appeared in the morning sky and had passed extremely close to the sun in perihelion. One suggestion was that all three were in fact the same comet, with an orbital period that was being drastically shortened at each perihelion passage. The fragments of the Great Comet of 1882 were returned in several hundred years' time, spread out over perhaps two or three centuries. Thank you. Jasmine Ende is an artist and vocalist for a black feminine and punk band, Fuck You Pay Us. Uh, her art practice spans performance, textiles, writing, and community building as a form of activism. She leads a monthly fighters group centering how craft and DIY culture can be used for social justice. Please welcome Jasmine Ende. Unraveling systems and thinking about um, taking my pieces and taking them apart and seeing work. I right, think seeing work become a ball again and recreating from that place. So yeah, I might not be talking much, but we'll see. Sometimes the anger in my chest matches my heart rate. 
I'm saving myself from you over and over again. I'm sick of being told that my identity is I'm sick of being told that my identity is I'm sick of being told that my push and pull in my open. I'll relearn how to listen. <laughs> but probably think of a bitch if I'm actually bare, if I break down, if I need safety. I'm learning how to make something for myself, to create a gift that's only for me, to not always give it away. Maybe I'll create it just to destroy it, and that will be the gift I gave to myself. I will never stop coming into my own empowerment. I will never stop coming into my own empowerment. I will never stop coming into my own empowerment. It's not something I can hold once. Yesterday was over. Yesterday is over, but today I know what I need. Thank you.
Manuel Arturo Abreu is a poet artist in the Bronx. They live, work in a garage in southeast Portland and receive their BA in linguistics at Reed. They use what is at hand in a process of magical thinking with attention to ritual aspects of aesthetics. Recent exhibitions and projects and discourse at Baby Lobby Gallery, Yabi Madrid, MoMA and MoMA PS1, Centre d'Art Contemporain in Geneva, Veronica, Rhizome, and the New Museum, and locally in Portland at the Art Gym, Yale Union, Open Signal Portland Community Media Center, and S1. Abreu wrote two books of poetry, list of consonants and trans trender, and one book of critical art writing and calculable loss. Abreu composes club feasible worship music as Tower Dark. Please welcome that Manuel Petro Abreu. Thanks everyone for sticking around. Uh, thanks to Bohosi and Jasmine for such amazing work. Um, this poem is called Untitled, and then in parentheses, Gesture. I'm going to try to recite it from memory, uh, something I've been trying to do more recently. <clears throat> Untitled Gesture. Self-loathing is called feeling male. My younger sister always felt like my older sister. Apologies are a form of social control. I apologize to my mom for DJing devil music. This tattoo says, I've been outside myself for so long, I'm no longer allowed back in. This feeling is shot entirely with natural light, especially screen glow. I feel sad and ancient for seeing a thousand years in every gesture and I get anxious. I'm living in a place where the door is a big glass pane. Not that you could erase a colonial gesture. <clears throat> um, this one is called Untitled. And then in parentheses, uh, Shame. Soon I hope to become tired of punishing myself. In a sense, your face is already sacred for me. I will not repent from this close harmony. The memory itself is murky, but the hole it leaves is so crisp it seems iron. Don't blame yourself. This is a violent season. Uh, this is called Untitled, and then in parentheses, Plants. Humans are able to live without memory, just like there are plants that live without chlorophyll. The way this slice of pizza becomes cold and dead reminds me of when you left and told me you would not miss how our bodies never quite fit next to each other. We twiddle our thumbs and have stretch marks from nothing. I betray my body as if I had a choice. This is called Tabor Light. Some say all suicides go to heaven. If you sit long enough, you can hear them. Random pangs as they purify themselves. Some ancestral affect cycles are incomplete, such as a song built with natural light the sound conducted through tiny bones in the head, negative harmony, the vast roots underfoot. The light of transfiguration on Mount Tabor perceived by unbelievers will be seen as the fires of hell. And what of its shadow? Words articulate space rooted in melody, tin ear coritos and handing out tracks on the corner. Se burlan de nosotros, pero todavía vienen con la comida. Windowed by undulations in the firmament, angels sprinkle moon lung dust on this world. Liborio te brinda un vaso de agua, a glass of water which is in fact an oak tree. Liborio no muerto nada. So the light of transfiguration on Mount Tabor is like where Jesus transforms into all the different prophets and stuff. In Eastern Orthodox, if you're not Christian and you see that light, it actually looks like the fires of hell. So I was kind of interested in that. Because that means that it's the same thing. It's just perception is what changes what you see, I guess. Uh, this is called Song Cry. Uh, it's after Jay-Z. <coughs> He's got a lyric that goes, uh, can't see myself with tears running down my eyes, so I gotta let the song cry. I'm watching raindrops race on the window. 
Imagine nostalgia for something you never knew. Imagine the way rain smells like spit. Imagine a room where everything looks like one system, like skin. Imagine that room is another country. Sometimes I look at people crying and think of stars. There should be plushies of brick walls. It feels like I can only express emotions by exaggerating them. Are spatial metaphors at the root of all misunderstandings? At least we have disappointments, growing like birds will in the future from seeds. Okay, this is called Untitled Labor. Uh, don't be the person who reads Humans of New York comments and cries. <laughs> <laughs> or you can be that person, I just don't want to be that person. <laughs> There's a deep slippage between being rigorous and being tortured. Torture me, daddy. <laughs> Did Balzac really die of drinking too much coffee? It really makes you think. <laughs> Mysticizing oppression and quantifying it are false binary. Thinking ahead will only leave you lonelier in the end. When the big other goes on a diet, Changing can be as simple as turtles all the way down. When you think about leaves changing color, it's about lost loves. Having a green dream is not a refusal of work. That's a shout out to that Chomsky thing. Colorless green dreams sleep furiously. I don't know why they're sleeping so furiously. <laughs> they just are. This is called the more I feel lost, the more I believe I can be helped by this unknown source of knowledge or understanding. It's about one of my ex's moms, who was dope. <laughs> I'm just to say. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, I've been having this problem with my phone where it doesn't stay on the page I need it to be on. My phone, like, screen protector is all dirty and shit. It's covered in cum. <laughs> wow, well, that's up to cum. <laughs> okay, the more I feel lost, the more I believe I can be helped by this unknown source of knowledge or understanding. <clears throat> Poems about exes, but sorry. Dawn knuckle pedal spit ghost clutching her damp airplane pillow. Your mom begins conducting the waves as if it was her duty. Next to her is some lady, your mother's hair so short because she cuts it every day. Peeing in the water, she loves her birth control. They're listening to Eminem, your mother is loving it, finally hearing the ocean in her headphones. Across the hall, walls sink together like a cootie catcher, lovers pulling away their hands. In shrink wrap breath and ghost shaped arrows, you stick your hand inside your sandwich. Something was left at the corner of the eye, and not a smile's wrinkle. The more it feels lost. Okay. Um, I'm just scrolling. This is called Caveat Emptor. It's in two parts. This is the first part. I have something on my desktop from 2013. My mother dreams of falling molars. She waited 23 years. Sorry. <laughs> Classic. This happened at the other reading and I like almost destroyed my phone. But who cares? Fuck poetry. Okay. She waited 23 years. The seatbelt became a snake or a figure in a door's threshold. This vow of silence sustained us. You slice open the mango, inside is a tongue, a new level of boneless. You know how it is, how it is what it is. You left and never left. Once you go back, you never go back. The eureka moment is a ruined orgasm, and you've successfully politicized your boring white art. Congrats. <laughs> Why do you guys do that? <laughs> People can't forgive, only gods. Crossing water, gaining faces. You've loosened the sky so much, and it still hasn't fallen. A breeze comes from nowhere. This is the second part. 
I don't trust you as far as I can blow you, but I'm probably still going to blow you. A memoir. <laughs> Times arrow auctioned off for urethral sounding. Love urethral sounding. That's when you put sticks down your urethras. <laughs> deport all white vegans who don't advocate for migrant worker rights. Scratch that. Just deport all white vegans. Bye bye. Just a protozoid from sixth dimension, to be honest. Uh, do. I keep waking up with cuts on my hands. They smell suspiciously fragrant. On Facebook, I just blocked the human version of Maudlin of the Well. Goodbye forever. I still get rocks off. Fantasizing a bright future is a sign of depression. One weird trick to use your puke as shampoo. <laughs> I knew I was an artist when you told me I make eating an art. Shout out to Hakeem in sixth grade. <laughs> I knew I was an artist when you said nice gender. Did your mom pick it out for you? Fuck yeah, she did. <laughs> Where <are you> <laughs> Shouts out to my mom. Wearing this computer angel may help you to get online quickly and keep all the bugs out. Who knew sensitive cookies were so dangerous? I'm such a hedonist, I never go outside. All on the, a all on the road in ashen coconut shining. Ugh. Sorry. Here we go. Along the ashen road, a floating coconut covered in eggshell powder shines brightly to guide me. Materiality provides a threshold rather than a primary qualitative characteristic which information must have if it is to be useful. Okay, this is called Betty Asher. And I wrote this for Rhizome in 2016 for a reading that we had online with them. If I can never get there. <laughs> Sorry, this is so ridiculous. That's not going to do anything. But let's make it my frustration out. So. Okay. Betty Asher. All cis people ever wanted was genital obsession. I'm happy to accommodate. <laughs> is, it, <laughs> is it possible Betty Asher's extensive collection of pop art kitsch, especially her cups and saucers, drove her son Michael Asher into austere conceptualism? Let's talk about it. Please stop fucking doing this. Yeah, I don't know if this is gonna work at all. <laughs> Do you wanna use my phone? If you want. Uh, okay. I wanna make my dick small and gnarled, a poisoned nun, complex with negative space. This is not gonna work, yeah, sorry. I can email you the file. <laughs> <laughs> Please stop. Um, maybe I should just read from my little book. Stupid fucking phone. All right. I want to make my dick small and gnarled, a poison nun, complex with negative space, also covered in sweat because it's hot as fuck. Complex with negative space, like a fish squished against its bowl, a new and allegorical statue. Take the cylinder out my kidneys, the connecting rod out my brain, the camshaft from under my backbone, and assemble the engine again. I sleep like an unborn cousin, brought back from feasibility. I love you, but I've chosen sandwich artists. <laughs> this is not the fresh hell I ordered. <laughs> a toad sings in the sugar cane The way the sun shines is a palindrome My other pony boy is Franco Bifo Berardi I put him in a little harness and he drives me around in a cart <laughs> That's up, Bifo <laughs> An endless lack of shadow settles in the heart Context is a harsh mistress and I'm an inception of soggy brides Squeeze the doors from my eyes, the empty thresholds are Penelope's of rain and fried air. The easy way out is to say gender is an ontological impossibility. The easy way out is to say race is an ontological impossibility. Why does falling asleep mean telling ourselves lies? Of course, the moment that I read that it moves away. 
Do you guys have an answer to that? No, I didn't think so. <laughs> Baked into the looking glass in a medium of portraiture once reserved for the divine, an angular figure of orbs and hashtags straddles an ambiguous K. Me leaving the Bronx was me running away from every fucking idiot that looked like my dad. He trains for the day I hope never comes, brick by brick, speaking only with a plum in his mouth. The mouth is a hole where the words should be, he tells me with his belt. Forgiving is giving up any hope of the chance of a better past. Tons, leaves, loaves of bread, his skin a luminous, dying orange. El coco parió a el agua, pero la piedra parió al santo. In the shadow of a cloven hoof, you fear touching me. The valleys go unspoken. This room is a fjord, except instead of a fjord, it's a closet smeared in pre cum. <laughs> Shots I come. <laughs> <laughs> I get tired of not pretending. I'm very committed to being a dilettante. You're in denial about the way you cope by conflating taxonomies with what they classify. In the salt pillar of this femhood, I turn to you and ask, does the Marquis de Sade shit in the woods? <laughs> okay, I'll do one more. Um, Joseph, how am I doing on time? Fine. Okay. Let's do one more of these offensive poems. Uh, let's do this one. If I could vote, I'd vote for Cardi B. <laughs> Uh, again, wrote this in April 2016. I was doing a bunch of site-specific writing. Every time that someone invited me to read, I would write for the event. So this was written for my friend Jeannie Yoon. She had a poetry reading called In Advance of Orange. And then she moved away from Portland. <laughs> she was like, I'm going to start a poetry series. And then she moved. So, same, I guess. Uh, yeah. Our lady of those bags full of other bags my mom always keeps under the sink back home. Help me be patient with the cave mayonnaise, that's white people. The demon in my inner ear tells me that a lack of hell is robotic. You need hell. She reminds me to celebrate the Titanic today. That's what y'all get for taunting God and masturbating with fancy sauce. Fancy sauce is ketchup and mayo. I just showed this. <laughs> Guilt is the fantasy I anchor myself with, a sanctuary of displaced landfills. As European labor cognitivized, so too did alienation. Being white and Western means being alienated from how violent and wasteful your existence is. You faintly hear from far away some managerese about agile social workflow engagement rate application methodologies. Think of it as a claim to desublimation. In other words, white women tossed aside the wages for housework picket signs, entered the workforce, and hired black and brown women to do domestic labor for almost nothing. The old American way, animal white infants suckling dark nipple, cooing for the absent referent, a cuckold encased in amber. Apparently not shaving is only feminist if you have a white pussy. <laughs> I mean, that's chill, you identify as an animal, but I often got called a monkey growing up, so forgive me if it seems like I'm humoring you. I know now to treat white people like pets. The trick is to put a Starbucks in the gulag. Oh, that's fucking hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> as end of doom says, <laughs> come on, Starbucks in the gulag? Yeah. <laughs> Where, how are they gonna fucking pay for it? There's no money. <laughs> no, you guys don't care. As Emma Dune says, living off bar time, the clock ticks faster. When you're stolen, you're stolen. All your affect is carceral. We all see the blood of slaves and natives on these walls, too. All the undocumented maids in the country couldn't clean it. Not my mom, not my sister, not my grandma, not me. So you treat self-actualization as a branding exercise. Bad faith as a trick of the light. Hoping we don't see that same charred face we see every night, like Spinoza in his study hoping the world is an idea in God's mind. By the way, how are we gonna live without phallic metaphors for violence? I don't know, rehab is always an option. Concepts are the dream of the citizen. This is what they prepare you for. In your glee, you get deputized as a monster. All reverse empaths are fascists.
and it's nine now, so we're done. Thank you. Thank you to all the readers and performers, and thanks for coming out tonight. And if you can, put a dollar, two, or five in the uh, donation jar. We'll go to the readers. Thanks. Thank you, Joseph.